Welcome back, everyone. The Islamic sources record many instances of people questioning Muhammad to test his claims of prophethood. Predictably, these pious accounts cast him in the most positive light possible. Muhammad has all the answers, which amazes his interrogators, some of whom convert to Islam. That's how it goes, sometimes. At other times, things don't go quite so well. According to Ibn Ishaq's Life of Muhammad, some Jews came up with three questions to ask Muhammad. Ask him about three things of which we will instruct you. If he gives you the right answer, then he is an authentic prophet. But if he does not, then the man is a rogue. So form your own opinion about him. Ask him what happened to the young men who disappeared in ancient days, for they have a marvelous story. Ask him about the mighty traveler who reached the confines of both east and west. Ask him what the spirit is. If he can give you the answer, then follow him, for he is a prophet. If he cannot, then he is a forger, and treat him as you will. The seer goes on to say that Muhammad promised an answer to these questions the next day, but the answer didn't come. Day after day passed and still no answer. A couple of weeks passed and finally, Muhammad's Islamic angel visited him and revealed chapter 18 of the Quran. Here are Muhammad's responses to the questions you just heard. These answers come right from Allah through Islamic Gabriel. Question one was about the young men who disappeared in ancient days. Muhammad's answer was the seven sleepers of Ephesus story. Question two was about the mighty traveler who reached the confines of both east and west. Muhammad's answer was found in the Alexander the Great legends. The third question was about the spirit. Muhammad's answer was, I don't know. So in response, Muhammad told two mythical stories and then admitted his lack of theological acumen about the spirit. Not sure which is worse, retelling tales of the ancients or not being able to articulate basic theology. Regardless, Muhammad did seem to have a particular difficulty with the latter. Later on in the series, some Jews return with more questions about theology. Now, Muhammad, Allah created creation, but who created Allah? The apostle was so angry that his color changed and he rushed at them, being indignant for his Lord. Gabriel came and quieted him, saying, Calm yourself, O Muhammad. And an answer to what they asked came to him from God. Say, he God is one, God the eternal, he begetteth not, neither is he begotten, and there is none equal to him. When he recited that to them, they said, Describe his shape to us, Muhammad, his forearm and his upper arm. What are they like? The apostle was more angry than before and rushed at them. Gabriel came to him and spoke as before. There are lots of references in the Hadith about Muhammad getting so mad that his face would change color. Apparently he had an anger management issue. So who were some of these pesky Jews who were pestering Muhammad? You probably recognize one of them. As things go from bad to worse for Muhammad, notice the name Labid bin Assam. He was one of the rancorous opponents of the apostle and his companions, the men who asked questions. And yes, you know him because, according to Ibn Ishaq, he was the one who bewitched Muhammad so that he could not have intercourse with his wives. This is especially embarrassing because the sexual stamina of men is touted conspicuously ad nauseum in the Muslim sources. So we read, Muhammad used to have intercourse with all nine of his wives in one night, except when he was bewitched, of course. And in Allah's paradise, men are promised incredible sexual strength commensurate with all of the women allotted to them. Well, that went downhill quickly. Sometimes when asked questions, Muhammad retold tales of the ancients. At other times, he claimed ignorance, especially in the theology department. At still other times, he got angry and was inclined to violence. But some of his questioners didn't only best him with questions and temperament. They bested him with bewitching, thus precluding, at least temporarily, what would appear to be one of the most important functions of men in the Islamic sources, the ability to have intercourse with multiple women. And all this, remember, is in sources written, edited, and transmitted by pious Muslims. It definitely makes me wonder what would be in the less pious versions of the life of Muhammad. But then again, it would be difficult to make Muhammad seem more inauthentic than he already does. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.